Hey, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm and normally I make gardening videos, but today I'm straying from that a little bit to talk to other small YouTubers like me about how you can have some success in YouTube, getting your videos noticed against all of the noise. There's so many videos out there. How can you succeed? And I think I entitled this video for the rest of us, because let's face it, if you're super attractive, super funny, super talented, or naturally attract attention in other ways, then you probably don't need my advice to get noticed on YouTube. But what about us, the small hobbyists, the small YouTubers who just want to share their passion for their hobby with the world and be a part of that conversation. How do you get your stuff noticed? And I've had some success in that regard. So uh, recently I've had a number of my videos blow up past 100,000 views. I'm picking up over a thousand subscribers a month now in my slow season. So I'm starting to have some traction there. So I want to share with you some of the tips that I've that I've put together some of the things that I've learned over my first couple of years as a YouTuber that might help you to get your videos noticed. I'm gonna put those up right now on a graphic on the screen just to let you preview what I'm going to talk about. I'm also going to link those below the video in the first pinned comment indexed by time so that you don't have to waste your time on a topic that you're not interested in. Uh, for those of you who normally tune into my channel to hear me talking about roses or gardening, don't worry, my hands will be back in the dirt by next week. So this is just a temporary thing, something I felt I had to share with other small YouTubers and let's go. My first tip, and it may surprise you where I start, is fix your audio. And I'm gonna state the obvious here, but these are moving pictures with sound. And so you're making a topic video and the value you're adding to your viewer is that you're gonna give them lots of information. If they can't hear what you're saying, they will click off, no doubt about it. I had a tip early on in one of my videos from a, another YouTuber named Morgan Brown and props go out to him for at least being straight with me that my audio kind of sucked. And I looked back on the footage and I realized, yeah, nobody was watching to the end of the video because it went in and out of audio just on my camera microphone. So if you can get away from using just the internal mic on your cell phone or the internal mic on your camera and go over to something like a shotgun mic. Now I'm inserting a picture of my shotgun mic here and you'll see it has this big fuzzy, they call it a dead cat thing on the top of the shotgun mic. That's to reduce wind sound or wind noise because I shoot an awful lot of my videos outdoors. Whatever your circumstances are though, you wanna make sure you're close enough to your microphone that you get good audio and you don't have static or hiss or widely varying levels in your audio. So check that in editing, it will improve your watch through on your videos and watch time is what gets YouTube to recommend your videos. My second tip today is to get yourself out in front of the camera and it can be comforting, I admit, to just get behind the camera and start taking shots of your subject, maybe narrate from the background. The problem is that there are so many other videos out there, so much garbage being uploaded to YouTube every day, auto-generated stuff with robotic voices. There's nothing that is going to give you credibility to your audience quicker than seeing your real face, hearing your real voice, and in a fashion, then being able to look you in the eye and tell how credible you are on your topic. So you have to get out in front of the camera and I admit it is really uncomfortable. Hey, I'm really uncomfortable right now, but the more practice you get in front of the camera, the easier it will become. And I promise you, it will show up in your results in how much people watch your videos. Tip number three, give your audience something else to look at. and. You'll notice already that I've changed scenes a couple of times in this video. Every time I bring a new tip, I've got a new background. It's completely unnecessary. I've done, nothing that's behind me is helping me to make a point about this video. It's simply because if you change your angle, you change your scene, you reset the attention of your viewer and they will watch longer. Another great tip to make this work for you is to add B-roll to your scenes. Now B-roll is a picture or a video that you've shot separately that you can either insert somewhere else on the screen or you can have it overlaid in front of the background audio entirely. And what it does again is it breaks up the monotony of having the camera just in front of you for 12 minutes or so, 10 minutes, eight minutes, whatever the length of your video, you will retain more of your viewers for more length of time if you change scenes, 
every now and again, and you also add B-roll to your videos. Tip number four is to get your ego out of the way. And frankly, it's number one in terms of its importance as a YouTuber, and it's probably number one in terms of its difficulty as well. I just didn't want to place it at the front of the video because I didn't want to scare you off. So what do I mean by get your ego out of the way? Well, when you post something on a social platform like YouTube, you are bound to feel judged by the results of your video. So I'll give you an example here. I made a video on how to try to fix stretched seedlings uh, early in the season, and I spent two weeks on it. I think it's the best thing out there on the topic, and it didn't do so well. It sort of stalled out at 2,500 views and went nowhere after that, and so that hurt my feelings. Meanwhile, I made a quick video on how to propagate roses from cuttings from a bouquet. Uh, it took me 10 minutes, put very little effort into it, just yammered on, and it has done outstandingly. So with those two pieces of information, it's very easy for me to look at that and say, I need to make less videos like this and more videos like this. But that's not necessarily what it means. The YouTube algorithm and the way people receive your videos is a little bit arbitrary at times. So you can feel like they stomped you down or judged you harshly when it's just a foible of the timing or the pacing or the length of your video or some other factor, right? And also, if you become a, a sudden YouTube star and you start chasing that by making more and more videos of exactly that same type, that can be negative on your creative process as well. So what I'd suggest you do, I mean, you can't ignore the success or failure of your videos, but you definitely have to take it with an objective mind, sort of set aside how you feel about it and just look at the factors. Just look at what went into the video, what the timing was, what the length of the video was. Try to isolate the factors that made you successful or not successful in those videos and try to take your personal feelings out of it. Hard to do. Tip number five is to add captions to your video. And first I'll talk about why, and then I'll do some screen captures to show you how. So a lot of people are watching your videos on their mobile phones, and not in every situation on a mobile phone can people be listening to the audio. So they can put it onto subtitle mode or, or closed captioning mode. And a, I, in, in my experience, about 10% of my audience is watching in this manner. But that's not the only reason why you wanna add captioning is to capture an extra bit of audience. The second reason is that YouTube, Google, can use the transcript that you approve from your captioning to create search terms for that video. So if you're talking constantly, in my case about roses or propagating roses, then that is going to make your video come up higher in the search results. So in order to make the captioning, what you do is you go on to uh, the YouTube Studio. Now, in this case, you have to go back to YouTube Studio Classic. It's not a feature yet of the new uh, Studio Beta. Uh, you go into the Video Manager, and from the uh, Choose Your Video, and from the Edit drop-down menu, click Subtitles slash CC. Add, uh, or click the Add New Subtitles, and usually within about 30 minutes of you uploading your video, Google will have made an automatic translation or an automatic captioning of your video. So if you go ahead and click create new subtitles in the next menu, it will auto populate your video with timings with those subtitles that Google has created. Now, if you just hit great publish, then you'll get what Google has automatically published for you but that's not good enough. You have to actually go through it line by line. The reason is because about half the time it calls my the name of my business wrong. About half the time it also represents Rose, R-O-S-E, as Rose, R-O-W-S. So it does an awful lot of little errors that can make problems for you in the way that your audience sees the words and also in the way that it shows up in the search results. So definitely go through it one time to make sure it's all correct hit publish, and then your video will show up with the closed captioning symbol beside it, which will also make it show up higher in the search results. One more unnecessary change of background, and I'm going to give you tip number six, which is the one that I'm not following right now. The tip is to stay within your zone of expertise. There's something that Google calculates. I don't know how they do it. I don't think it's a number you can look up, but it's basically called channel authority and it relates to the topics that you talk about. So for instance, if I make a video right now about roses, 
it gets a lot of hits. A lot of my viewers are used to looking at content like that from me. And so Google knows with confidence it can recommend that around that group and I will always get a number of hits. But if I go straight outside of my zone of expertise and suddenly I'm talking about butterflies or spiders or uh, windsurfing, it isn't going to have that same confidence that can go around to the people who it's recommended my videos to before and get the same results. So it does react to you building areas of expertise within your channel. I've built around roses, I've built around propagation. I've been talking a little bit about how to run your own backyard nursery. Those things I can have pretty good success with. I suspect that this video here, the one I'm making on how to succeed on YouTube, will not get recommended as strongly. That's fine, I'm making this mostly for myself and maybe for some other small YouTubers. But for you, if you see this, make sure you navigate within your zone of expertise. You can expand it, you can take some things outside of it, do some experimenting, but you do want to find a way to relate that back to the theme of your channel so that you'll have your best level of success. Now back inside now for tips number seven and eight, the first one of which is to customize your thumbnails. So if you just upload a raw piece of footage to YouTube, just something that you've shot about your hobby, what it will do to make the thumbnail is it will offer you an, a selection of two or three different screen captures from your video from moments that it chooses itself. And those are not great thumbnails. Your goal is that if people, if your viewers, see that thumbnail either in the search results or on their home page or on the next suggested videos that they're going to see it and they're going to want to click on it and those screen captures just don't do the job so you have to find a way through an editor i use LibreOffice draw just to make something that's in that 16 by 9 format up to about two megabytes in size that better epitomizes what your video is about and at least looks semi-professional in my case I'm by no means a master of this, but at least I put a couple of pictures of plants in my thumbnails. Uh, I have uh, a readable piece of font that's pretty consistent between the videos. And so people can recognize my videos if it comes up in their suggestions. Uh, there is a, a great school of thought now that talks about getting way better results by putting your face into the thumbnail. So especially if you can make it dramatic, if you do a little like, uh, like a reaction, like ah, you know, something like that, that will tell a story, it will make people curious, and then they will click on your video first. So think about that. I'm not the best guy to give you advice on it, but certainly don't settle for the stock thumbnails that come out of your footage. And the last one here I'm going to talk about is to make your videos searchable. And this is a general topic called SEO, or search engine optimization. Again, I'm not an expert on it, but basically what you wanna be able to do is have a title that people would search for, especially for a smaller YouTuber. If you're a YouTuber that has 500,000 subscribers and you just put down something generic, like, I can't believe my mom just did that, then people don't have to search for it, they'll just click on you because they know you. But if you're a small YouTuber trying to make something on machine tools, it might make sense for you to have machine tools uh, in some searchable term in your title also in the search terms that are below it. So you get tags that you can put onto your video and add tags that both generally and specifically talk about your video. Also, even though this sounds repetitive, you wanna put those same terms and the same tags into your description, into full sentences. And if you've CC'd or subtitled your video, when it reads that transcript, it will emphasize the same thing. The, the total effect of having the title, the tags, the description, and your transcript of the video all saying roughly the same thing about what you're going to deliver to the customer or the viewer is that when they search something specific, you have a better chance of showing up in the results. Okay, that is the end of my video. I think this is the point where most YouTubers would say, consider subscribing to my channel. But if you're not into gardening, you would get very little value here. So I'm just gonna say uh, thank you for watching and I wish you the best of success with your small YouTube channel. Uh, I hope it works out for you. And if it does, hey, share some tips below the video, see if uh, you can help anybody else along the way.